Hey, what is up, guys? I'll go back to my channel. My name is Osama, call me. And yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, I had a little bit of a break. Um, I know I uploaded something on Tuesday. It was the game of the year thing. But that, that was just that was just me editing, you know, that and putting it on Tuesday. So it didn't really took me too much. And, you know, that after that video, I, I really had nothing planned. So, uh, yeah, this video is going to be about the news. We're going to be talking about shit. And yeah, this is probably going to take me a day, so it's going to be uploaded in uh, Sunday. And you know, some of these news will be outdated, but I really have some opinions about this. Like PlayStation not going to E3 at 2019. So yeah, PlayStation will not be attending uh, 2019's E3. So yeah, uh, a lot of people, including me, did speculate, you know, they yeah, they're not going to the E3 building, but they are probably going to have their own press conference, you know, their own E3. Now, other companies have done the same thing, like EA, Nintendo, and I think Microsoft, because they do have their own building, and that's where they, you know, do the live streams for that. But I still think they have, like, a booth in the E3 building, so yeah. But this is PlayStation. So far, this generation, they have been announcing a lot of good games. Now, hearing them say, oh yeah, we're not having a conference this year. Wait, what? Because, you know, in my opinion, I feel like Sony, PlayStation, has been the one that's been, you know, making E3 worth watching, you know? EA, Ubisoft, and Bethesda has been the companies that make E3 unwatchable. Like, Bethesda, I think there was one year, I think, when Fallout 4 came out and they were showing the trailers. I feel like that, you know, um, conference was pretty good, but... Yeah, after that, it was just complete shit. Uh, Ubisoft and EA, I don't feel like they're even trying. Like, they, it's it's always just boring as fuck. Oh, yeah, Square Enix had a conference, too. That's that's also boring. Like, I didn't even watch, you know, last year's uh, Square Enix. Now, Xbox, yeah, they've been really bad also. But uh, last year, 2018's E3 was actually pretty good. The, the games they reveal were games that I would actually play. And they, it's just the, the, the reveals were really good. I didn't feel like throwing up when I watched the E3 conference, unlike, the, you know, the XO18's conference. Now, Nintendo, they don't really do much in E3 because they already have their own, like, daily, you know, announcements, uh, the Nintendo Directs. And, yeah, sometimes their Directs are actually pretty good, and sometimes they're just complete bullshit. It's like, oh, wow, did, did, I, really, did I really watch 40 minutes of just complete dog shit? Really? Usually I like watching, you know, Etika's stream during the direct, like seeing his reaction because he's always over the top and he's funny as fuck. And yeah, E3 has been getting worse and worse. And the same conversation always comes up. Is E3 still necessary? Because like I said, more and more companies have been leaving the E3 building and just start, you know, creating their own building. And that's where they you know, reveal their games in there. I don't think companies no longer need E3 because, you know, we got social media. You could upload and tweet about a game, uh, about a new game you're going to reveal, and that will probably get as much attraction than doing it in E3. I mean, shit, look at Nintendo Direct and look at Xbox, inside Xbox. They've been doing, you know, just like their own type of um, little mini conference and revealing, you know, new information about their console or the games coming out and they're not doing like a, a press conference where you know they got announcers and all that shit no just it's just a live stream so yeah a uh, little prediction somewhere around maybe like after four or five years yeah e3 is not gonna exist and yeah companies will make their own building and announce their games in there or just do like a live stream you know just doing it in their office and yeah, just revealing the games there. And yeah, I know. Oh, E3 is all about, you know, networking and playing the games there. It's like, well, yeah, but there are so many gaming conventions that do it better than E3, like GamesCon or PAX, so many. And they do it better than E3. Like, I heard E3 is always overpopulated and it's always like, it's just really hard to navigate in that building. Because of how many people are there. So yeah, um, you know, every year we're always asking a question. Is is E3 still necessary? Like, it, we're going to see it become irrelevant by the years. And, I don't know, somewhere around maybe 2023 or 24, yeah, we're, it's going to stop existing. Or maybe earlier than that. So, uh, yeah. Alright, so when this news came out, a lot of people were saying, Oh, well, looks like Sony has nothing to announce. And then after that, people were like, Wait, does that mean the PS5 is coming? Alright, so I don't want to go too much in depth with the PS5 because I already made the videos about, you know, my predictions, when's it coming out, uh, what I want to see in the next PS5. I'll probably talk about it, maybe the next uh, PS5 news, I don't know, but yeah. Um, Is it coming? I mean, okay, let's see. Is it going to be, like, 
are we going to get an announcement or a reveal next year, 2019? I don't think so. We might get a hint or maybe somewhat reveal at 2019, but that's it. 2020, yeah, I think we're going to get a, uh, a reveal at 2020. They're probably going to reveal it uh, at 2020, you know, E3 time. But when it's coming out, um, I think it's either coming 2021 or 2020. But a lot of people are saying, oh, no, it's coming next year or 2020. It's like, what? N no. We, we, st I like, I, it still feels a little bit early. I still feel like, I, I, like, I just bought my PS4 Pro this year. So, yeah, just, just give me a few more years. And then I'll be like, all right, let's get this old shit out of here. Let me buy that new shit. All right, so next news is, uh, yeah, this, this, <laughs> fuck. I thought I was going to upload this on Sunday, but yeah, it's, it's fucking Monday. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so next news we got is Red Dead Redemption 2 will be having online tomorrow so yeah like i said rockstar doesn't need advertisement they could just do this tomorrow it's coming tomorrow i was like wait what i, I wasn't prepared you, you you could you should have told me you know weeks ago now they're calling this a beta so i'm not sure if this is like some type of you know closed or public beta like do are, does everybody get to play or is it like um only now i'm hearing uh, some from somewhere people are saying like this will be only available to the people who bought like the the deluxe or the golden edition so uh, I don't know. We we really don't know much because it's coming tomorrow. So what's the point of just giving up the news right now? <laughs> I think this might be available to everybody. Now, they're calling this a beta because you know, just like GTA 5's online, like I think the first few weeks when it came out, everything was fucked up. There was always server errors, uh, lobby being too full, uh, you can't find a match. Um, uh, look, this happened to me. You You go customize your car and then once it got destroyed, yeah, they, they, they was like, what, what? You have a car? No, you don't have a car. It was like, wait, what? I, I, I spent time customizing my car. Now you're telling me, do it again. <laughs> yeah, that first few weeks of GTA Online was was not even playable. Y y yeah, you get to walk around, but then, you know, the fucking servers tell you, oh, yep, it's time's up. You got to get the fuck out of here. So, yeah, I finished Red Dead. So, like, right now, I'm like, what is there to do? Like, I I'm already done with the main quest, but good thing the uh, multiplayer is coming. So, yeah, um... Now, now, since the season pass was included in the other, you know, editions, are we going to get any DLCs coming out anytime soon? Because I really want there to be more stuff to do in the campaign because I'm, I'm really having fun. But, you know, right now I'm like, oh, I have nothing to do because I already beat the campaign. And yeah, I know I could be, you know, hunting rare animals or doing the side quests. But like, what's the point of hunting and making these cool outfits if, you know, all I'm going to do is just go to my horse and just find trouble? Like, it, like there needs to be more stuff to do. Hopefully the DLCs they give us is going to be like something about the campaign, like expansions, making the world bigger. Maybe, you know, unlocking Mexico. And hopefully the season pass isn't just like, oh, here's maps for multiplayer. <laughs> Well, like, oh, god, you're you're doing a Call of Duty, god damn it. All right, so the next news we got is uh, Fallout 76 is one of the worst reviewed Bethesda games since Rogue Warrior. And yeah, I'm not not surprised. Um, Fallout 76 deserve all the hate it's getting. And Rogue Warrior was actually a pretty bad game. It, I think it was like unplayable. I think it was like a glitchy game also. All right, so the Metacritic score for Rogue Warrior is 27, but a user score is 2.8. Eight. Oh wow! All right, so let's check Fallout. Okay, I I was gonna type Fallout, but uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but you know I don't have the F key no more, so I'm gonna have to um uh, find a word here. Let's see. Um, all right, so I gotta find a letter F here. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Features. Let's put. Let's paste that. I'm just gonna put it there. Oh, but but for Xbox is worse or uh let, let's go to Xbox. All right, so Metacritic score for Xbox is a 49 and user score is 2.4. Wow, that's that that's really bad. <laughs> so for user score, Fallout 76 is worse than Rogue Warrior. So because um Rogue Warrior got a 2.8, but Fallout's uh got a 2.4. So yeah, uh so yeah. Everybody needs to return their copies, all right? If you got Fallout 76, hopefully you got your receipt, and, you know, don't get mad when you go to a GameStop and just destroy the entire store. Uh, yeah, hopefully you got a, you know, receipt. And you could return the game and get your money back. So yeah, the game is a hot mess. You know, I I'm very glad that the gaming community came together and say, "Yeah, this is this is 
This is just bad. Now, what everybody is saying, the problem with this game is the outdated engine. Now, Bethesda didn't come out and confirm this, but they did told us, oh yeah, the next games we're going to be making, yeah, they're going to be having the same engines as Fallout 76, like uh, the new Elder Scrolls and Stardust. And everybody was like, are, are you fucking kidding me? Like, y this engine is old as hell. <laughs> this engine is very buggy. Like, we, we still have the same problems like since Fallout 3 to this new Fallout like there's still the same problems I mean at least you know back then we had we had we had um uh modders that could fix the game but now it's like oh y you want mods you're gonna have to pay that shit so yeah uh fuck you know Bethesda and this game all right so last news we got is um this is gonna be a science news uh so yeah um I don't know if you guys know this but uh we just did surgery on a grape that was that was a scientific breakthrough. But yeah, I know, like in China, they did like a uh, genetic editing to these twins, and you know, gave them uh, resistant to HIV. But fuck, like we just did surgery on a grape. Like, what else could we do? We already went to space. What what else now? <laughs> like, wh what else could we say? You know what? Let's be God right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me to the Twitch, me Twitch, Twitch, and Twitter. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? So um, yeah. I was editing, and uh, Steven Hillingberg died. Uh, if you don't know who don't know who he is, he was the creator the 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 creator for the first three seasons of SpongeBob SquarePants, and those those, those three seasons were one of the best out of all of them. And till this day, this show is still really good. Like uh, it's still amazing. It still holds up. And I'm talking about the first three seasons of the show. And do you know why this show is still so great? It's because the creators make sure this show was appealing to both demographics, adults and kids. The writing was so good in this show. Like, when I was a kid, I'm like, huh, SpongeBob is so funny. But right now, I'm 20 years old. I'm looking at this show like, oh my fucking god, I'm Squidward. There was some episodes where they talked about a lot of adult stuff, like uh, protesting. And how they executed it in that video was so great. Like, they showed both sides. They showed, um, you know, Squidward tr trying to negotiate with Mr. Krabs for, like, a better pay or better hours. While Spongebob, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna just destroy this entire restaurant. And it shows consequences. Like, oh, it, it was better to negotiate than, you know, just do a riot and destroy the store. And now you're working there forever. <laughs> so yeah, guys, this show is just timeless. The writing is amazing. Like, I could probably watch a random episode, like, season one to three. And I, I would just be loving it. So, yeah, it is extremely sad to see Steven Hellingberg, you know, pass away. My God, like, this, this guy really made my childhood. And a lot of people's childhood. Just like Stan Lee. Damn, man, like, we, we lost two legends at the same month. This is extremely sad, man. Like, these guys made my childhood. And, yeah, you know, RIP to Stephen Hellerberg. So, yeah, guys, see you later, and bye.